Good morning, I'm Bruce Walker from First Christian Church of Bedford. We are here on this special Sunday to praise the Lord and give thanks for blessings we have in these difficult times. Today on Youth Sunday, our service has been written by the youth of First Christian Church, Bloomington and Bedford. Together, as much as we would all love to be in the sanctuary, together, we are doing our best to stay connected and share our love to God. So on this Sunday morning, let's all open up our hearts to let in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> The peace? peace of Christ. Christ be with you. Be with you.
please pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for continuing to join us together even during this troubling time. May you bless everyone with good health and loads of companionship during this quarantine. Please keep us together while we pray as our Father taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had the spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept us up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by evacuating customs and lawful for us Romans to accept our practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought he, the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembled before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and the washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought him to his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with a joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, Bedford and Bloomington First Christian Churches and anybody else who has decided to join us on this Sunday morning. My name is Ashlyn Reynolds. I am the youth director at First Christian Church Bloomington, and then I um, grew up in First Christian Church Bedford. So I have the privilege of being a part of both church families. Thank you for joining us for Youth Sunday. I'm really glad we could still make it happen during this time of quarantines and stay at home orders. And it's been a pleasure to work with the youth and I really love um, seeing their personalities and stuff come through and working with them. For the sermon portion of our service, some of our youth have decided to share um, some of their personal experiences. So when we first approached the scripture for this Sunday, we were looking at the story with like Paul and Silas and going to jail and still being able to praise God and find God. And that's kind of what we boiled it down to, was be a being able to find God in difficult spaces and difficult times. Still being able to hold on to your faith um, when times are just really tough. So some of our youth have um, been really brave and taken on the sermon part. And they're going to share some of their personal experiences in finding God during difficult times. Finding God when it's really hard. And then um, some of them has, have also chosen to share some quotes or some poetry that they really felt um, fit with our theme. So I hope you enjoy them and um, find some a little bit of God during all this craziness. Thank you. I think it's safe to say that it's easy to feel God's presence in places like church or at camp or at retreats. 
or when we're taking communion and singing hymns. But life is not just these easy places. Life's hard. No matter who you are, where you're from, where you live, who you surround yourself with, we all have times where it's difficult to feel God's presence. Now, I've never been in jail like Paul and Silas were in the scripture, but I've definitely been in a place or two where I've had trouble feeling God's presence. The past month or so has been difficult for all of us. The world has suddenly become a different place. We have new routines, crazy sleep schedules, and to me, everything feels off. Now, as a lot of you know, I'm someone who doesn't like to be bored. I keep myself pretty busy, and as tiring as that can be, it makes me appreciate the slow times a lot more. So this whole stop everything you have planned is pretty hard for me, and I can imagine for you too. Right now, I should be with my friends, celebrating the end of our school year, doing plays, and with my church family, giving hugs every Sunday, and going to prom, and planning the summer before my senior year. But I'm not. I'm at a standstill, and it's awful. It's so hard to feel God when nothing in the world feels right, but it's when you need God the most. Now, it may not be easy, but making sure that you can feel God's love and presence in these difficult times is what's most important. I hope that we can all come out of these dark times, praising God and spreading the good news, just as Paul and Silas did, even if that isn't the easiest route. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Corey Ten Boom. During this time of social distancing, we're spending a lot of time thinking about day to day rather than in advance. And whenever I was thinking about going through the daily challenges of life, I stumbled across this poem by Lenora McWhorter about life's daily doses. It goes as follows. Life is measured in daily doses, of trials and pleasures each. Day by day, grace is dispensed to meet our immediate needs. Comfort comes to the weary. We find that which we seek. A bridge is built at a river, and power is given to the weak. One day's load we have to bear as we travel on life's way. Wisdom is given for the occasion and strength to equal each day. We are never required to stacker under tomorrow's heavy load. We journey one day at a time as we travel life's rugged road. God's mercy is new every morning and his faithfulness is sure. God perfects all that concerns us and by our faith we will endure. This is a poem by Amy Hoover. Time is of the essence. Gray day, soft air. I breathe in, knowing I am loved. I breathe in, feeling too much. Conflict, suffering, worry, unsteadiness, confusion, isolation. I know that I am love. I long to rest in that love. I believe that I love others. I long to see evidence that my love has results. There is a tender space between the spirit and the body, the place of paradox in both and. I am most whole and most fluid in this window of connection. My brain was trained for concrete. My journey seeks the intangible. My peace comes in the interval. I breathe in the holy. Hello. My name is Lauren. As many of you know, I love spending time with my family, mainly my nieces. I have four nieces, two biological and two that were in foster care and in our homes for three and a half years. Our family loves to spend quality time together, whether it be going out to eat or even just talking as a family. This time of quarantine has been really rough on us. We usually visit each other at least once a month, if not more. Of course, thanks to FaceTime and Zoom, this has made it a little bit easier and we can talk face to face without physically being together. Although this helps, it's still not the same as being together physically. I felt hopeless. I felt out of control. I questioned whether God was with us. Why would he do this? Why would he cause a global pandemic and have thousands of people killed? I now know he is here with us. On April 23rd, 2020, 
my nieces were adopted into my sister's family. This happened over Zoom. Many people from different states and even countries got to watch this amazing thing happen. In this time of darkness, there will always be a little bit of light. He may just surprise you. Always have faith in God. Invitation to giving. Our world is in a strange state right now, but one thing that will always be true is that the Lord gives unique gifts to every single person. It's through these gifts that we give to help us serve our community and our congregation. Some use their time or talents, while others help us find fund our missions through giving, even though we can't hand you an offering plate directly. You can still give generously by mailing or dropping off your donations, or if you're being safe and staying home and giving, though our website is also an option, please use your gifts to help our ministry. Bless the offerings we give today from the change in our pockets to the crumbled bills in our purses. We give thanks. Let the power of the Father be the light that guides us, the compassion of the Son be the love that inspires us, and the presence of the Spirit be the power that empowers us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now be taking part in communion. If you haven't done so already, pause the video and prepare your materials to join us. At this time, we remember that all are welcome to the Lord's table, and that can be done anywhere, even at our own homes. This time we take to enjoy the feast is a way to connect us all, even if we're all taking part in it in different ways and at different places. So, please join us in this communion. Thank you. We recall that Jesus in the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took up the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Woke up this morning, and life as you know it Looks nothing like the kind of life you knew before All of a sudden, fear stole the headlines And it don't feel safe to even step outside your door In this world you will have trouble But I have overcome the world so take heart, take a breath, let me lift that heavy weight up off your chest. Take my hand, I know it's looking dark, when the world falls all around you, I won't let you fall apart. Take heart, take heart. 
Do you remember singing back when you were younger? He's got the whole world in his hands. Well, that's still true. I hold your family, all your friends, and all your loved ones. And even when you're barely holding on, I'm holding you. So take heart, take a breath. Let me lift that heavy weight up off your chest. Take my hand. I know it's looking dark. When the world falls all around you, I won't let you fall apart. Take heart. Take heart. Oh, take heart. Take heart. In this world, you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. So take heart, take a breath. Let me lift that heavy weight up off your chest. Take my hand. I know it's looking dark. When the world falls all around you, I won't let you fall apart. Take heart. Child, take heart. This technique This take and drink. Will you please pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for blessing us with so many ways to communicate during this stressful time. Even though we can't gather physically during this quarantine, we spiritually praise your name. We pray for people who are still up there in this crazy world putting their own health at risk so everyone stays healthy. Thank you so much for this day and for the strength we need to do work or school. Amen. Thank you for joining our youth online service. We can't wait to see everyone at church again. Always remember, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Amen. Send your spirit to set us free. Send your spirit to set us free. Fill our hearts and minds, loose the chains that bind. Send your spirit to 